What's going on Salt Star Nation? Today I'm going to be answering some questions that have come in on recent surf and beach fishing videos that I have not gotten a chance to answer yet in the comment section. Now, normally I don't spend too much time on YouTube answering questions there because I am the Insider Club Director here at Salt Strong and I try to make sure that all the members that are in the Insider Club that have questions or would like a video made about a certain subject are getting taken care of. So that's usually what I'm doing. Again, I don't want to leave you guys hanging, which is why I'm making this video today to knock off some of those questions in a really quick fashion. But if you like to have direct access to fishing coaches like me, Tony Acevedo, Luke Simons, and many, many more, I highly recommend you join the Insider Club where you'll be able to talk to them on a daily basis and ask questions or even request videos. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on some of these questions today. So the first couple questions are going to be coming off a recent video I did on how to tie your own pompano rigs. This one's from Pablo Diaz. He wants to know what I recommend to use this rig from a bridge or a pier. I'd say yes, absolutely. Especially if you're fishing from a pier that's on the beach, you can definitely pull in some pompano, some whiting, uh, some drum. It's just, uh, you know, more about the location. Make sure that you're not fishing, you know, on the end of the pier. I'd stick close to the beginning of the pier where the beach still is as these fish are, you know, not going to be out in the really deep water. They're still going to be cruising those beaches. So make sure you're putting them in the right location. If you're fishing from a bridge there could possibly be some better rigs to use like the dropper rig for example um, but you know this one's fine you can still catch those drum you'll catch a couple different species uh, just make sure you know you're adjusting your bait based on what might be there so you could put fiddler crabs on these and possibly pick up some sheep's head just make sure you're dropping it close to the structure you could possibly get some black drum or some red drum you know there's a ton of different species you could get uh, but I would say yes you could definitely be using these uh, rigs around piers and bridges the next question about these pompano rigs comes in from Selena Lopez Algria and I hope I did not butcher your name if I did I apologize but your question is can you catch redfish and sea trout on the pompano rig now the answer to that question is yes you can catch them you know here and there but this is definitely not going to be the best rig to target them with if I was going specifically for redfish and sea trout I'm guessing you're fishing off the beach if you're watching this video about pompano rigs um, I would go ahead and try and target them with a Carolina rig using either cut bait or live bait now the three species of bait I would be using is mullet it pinfish and croaker uh, now if I was going specifically for trout I'd lean closer to the live bait side and if I was going for drum I'd definitely go with cut bait but you'll catch both uh, on both setups now I would like I said just use a heavy egg sinker on that Carolina rig and the way a Carolina rig works for anybody who doesn't know about them it's just an egg sinker on your main line then there's a bead that's between your egg sinker and the swivel and then there's another leader that's attached to the other end of the swivel that goes out to your hook and that's where you'd either put you know your live bait or your cut bait so from Doc Bailey, he wants to know how durable is this rig? Would I tie a fresh rig daily? I've gotten two rigs out of mine and it looks okay. So with any rig, not just these pompano rigs, I would say unless you're seeing nicks and abrasions in the line, there's really no reason to change out your rig, especially if you're using those quick switch knots. Um, if anything's in your rig that's got you know metal hardware, there's a chance that it's gonna rust. Uh, with the quick switch knots, it eliminates the need for most hardware. Uh, the only hardware I'm gonna have on these pompano rigs is the swivel at the top and the snap swivel on the bottom. Uh, the good news is, you know, I can just trim those and tie a new one on, but if you've got a swivel or a snap swivel in the middle of your rig and it starts rusting, you'll definitely have to retire that rig. But using those quick switch knots, you know, if I've got hooks or things like that that start to rust, I can easily put the pressure on those and change them out. So I would say, again, unless you're seeing nicks uh, in the rig, there's no reason to change this one out. Another question from PW, any advantage to using the snap swivel to secure the sinker over what I do uh, when making the bottom rigs? And what he does is just tying a loop with a surgeon's knot to slip through the eye and over the sinker, always trying to save money. Now PW, I don't blame you. And I'll be completely honest, if you're just trying to save money, go ahead and do that. The only advantage you get when using a snap swivel is you know a couple seconds. So for anybody who doesn't know what uh, PW is talking about, all he does is he makes a perfection loop at the bottom of his line. And what that enables him to do is slide that loop almost like the quick switch knot, straight through the sinker eye and run it right back over. Now, I like saving a couple seconds, you know, by buying myself some snap swivels. Um, instead of having to put pressure on the end of the knot, all I gotta do is make one quick flick of my thumb and I can snap a new swivel on. So again, it's really up to you. Uh, there's no advantage. I would say it's probably gonna be the same amount of strength. Um, but if you wanna save a little money, definitely keep doing what you're doing. So the next couple questions are going to be coming in from a video I did on how to tie your own shock leaders for surf fishing. And this one is from Chris Howard. He says, what about line visibility? Wouldn't fluoro be better in clear water, even if you're using heavy braid in that situation? 
I have done a lot of testing with the fluorocarbon and the monofilament, and I know Luke has as well. And if you want to see a detailed analysis of mono versus fluoro, go check out our page. We've got a, a post that you know goes into way more depth than I will right now. But really, that claim that fluorocarbon is more invisible than monofilament is is just it, it's really not true. Um, and I've not, I've not seen any personal difference in the amount of fish that I catch when using mono versus fluorocarbon. So the mono that costs a lot less money to buy than the fluorocarbon, I'm gonna go ahead. And stick with that so if you don't want to take any chances you know go ahead and continue to use that fluorocarbon but if you want to save a little bit of money and again really not see too much of a difference uh, i'd go ahead and stick with the mono so this next one comes in from alan johnson do you ever have any issues with the knots damaging the guides thanks for the explanation and tips and what he's referring to is as i cast my surf fishing leader out is the knot as it passes through the guides causing any any damage and alan i've not seen any kind of damage to my rod guides uh, while casting these leaders and you know i've been using them for a while now but if you really want to be safe i'd go ahead and tie an fg knot instead of the double uni knot that i showed it's going to have a thinner profile and it's going to be a little bit better on your rod guides because they won't touch it as much now, speaking of the FG knot, we've got FG who asked a question and he was wondering about my beach fishing cart. And he said, how much did you pay for the cart? I see them listed for 79 uh, as well as $200. So I bought mine for $225, but you know, you can buy them online for a little cheaper. What you need to account for is the cost of shipping because you know, it could actually outweigh the cost of you buying it in store where it's a little bit more upfront, um, but that shipping cost will actually come and it'll bite you a little bit later on. Uh, and, and in terms of you know seeing them for as low as $79, I've never seen any that low. Uh, so what you might be looking at is a different version of the cart or a smaller size. I know that with the Fishing Mate Juniors, the Fishing Mate Junior that I have, there's a smaller size, the Fishing Mate Mini, and then there's a size above it called the Fishing Mate Senior. And you know as you go down in size, you're going to not have to pay as much. So I. I possibly is what you could have seen for $79. And then, you know, as you go up in size, you're going to be seeing some more expensive rigs uh, that are going to go up to, you know, up to possibly $300 for those fishing mate seniors. So I paid $225 to answer your question. So the next two questions are going to be coming in from a video I made on my top three surf fishing hacks. And the third hack, the one that's going to be in question for these two uh, is how to make pompano floats out of flip flops. Um, Thomas Hughes wanted to get a link to the flip flops that I used. I just walked into a dollar store and bought them. I'm not even sure if you can buy them online because you know they're 89 cents and I'm pretty sure it would cost whoever's making them more money to ship it to you than it would to you know manufacture it. So I don't know if you can buy them online. My recommendation is literally go to any dollar store at the beach or go to one of those wings or the eagles, those, those kind of tourist trap stores that sell really cheap stuff. Um, you can get them at Walmarts near the beach. You know, just look for that fluorescent color on those flip flops and that they're made of that really squishy foam and then you can cut them into them really easily. So I, I don't know if you can buy them online, but I would say it's probably just gonna be easier and cheaper to go and just get them in the store. So the next question about flip flops comes from Tony Bishop and he was wondering, what do I poke the holes with in the flip flop floats? Uh, and basically all I do is I take a sharp screwdriver or a ice pick, um, or if I don't even have those tools on hand, you know, if I'm at the beach and I realize I didn't poke a hole, you can just use like a fishing hook, like a wide gauge fishing hook, one of your bigger circle hooks and run it straight through the float. And with those dropper loops that you tie for the pompano rigs, they slide right into those uh, those holes that you create, even if they're really thin, because it's a stiff loop that you know if you pinch it and slide it straight through, it'll go in just fine. So again, you can use an ice pick, a small screwdriver, you know, a drill bit with a with a drill as you power drill it in. Uh, or if you don't have any of those tools, I can guarantee you've got a fishing hook that's kind of a wider gauge, and that'll put just a fine hole right through your float. So I got a question from Manuel Gonzalez on my review of fish bites and how to use them. And he wanted to know what hook sizes we recommend. And he said he's wanted to try some fish bites. So the hook sizes I've been using and I've had the most success with uh, are the two out hooks. Now you could downsize to the one out hooks and the pros and cons of that is with the two out hooks, you're not gonna catch as many fish, but the quality of the fish that you catch is gonna be better because they're a larger hook. And you know, the smaller trash fish won't get hooked, but it, you know, you start using those smaller, you know, the one out hooks uh, and I'm using the kale hooks. You, you might start catching some more trash fish like some croaker some spot things like that which you could use for bait uh, but if you want to catch you know the larger pompano the larger whiting i'd stick with the two watt so for the last question this was a pretty recent one i took it right before i started filming this video uh, from perry hodges what are the boots that i'm wearing i believe you were watching the video on how to upgrade your pier cart tires and i've actually got them right here uh, these are the extra tough wheelhouse boots these uh, are one of my favorite boots, you know, for fishing. I wouldn't use them for wading, uh, but if you know if you're going out in the kayak and you know you're not going to get out of your kayak, I like these a lot. And you know, if I'm walking to the beach, usually I take them off as soon as I hit the sand. You know, I like feeling my toes in the sand. But these are the boots I use, uh, the extra tough wheelhouse boots, and 
they're super comfortable. Uh, but guys, that is going to wrap up all these questions. If you guys have any more, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, I would be more than happy to you know continue doing them. Uh, but if you like this video and you want to have a little bit more direct contact with us, I highly recommend you check us out in the Salt Strong community. Not only are you going to be able to ask us fishing coaches questions, uh, you'll have more access to guides, other community reports, and there's a ton of other info in the Salt Strong community that would really be helpful for you guys. In fact, I'll show you a little bit right now. The Salt Strong Insider community has courses and tips designed to help you become a more efficient and consistent saltwater angler. And we also have reports from local anglers in your area to help you keep up with the trends and a guarantee that it will help you catch more fish or it's free. Now, with all the money that you'll be saving on rods, reels, lures, and tackle with your Insider Club discount in the shop, the membership pretty much pays for itself. So guys, thanks again so much for watching. I will see you on the next video. There's something about the water that'll give you all by yourself or with your family Live salt strong and wear the line today